Well, Dell's approaching the circular economy in a host of different ways, but I suppose it's from the ground up and, so, and it starts with design. Uh, and so the products that we're building today are really designed for uh, everything from uh, recycling to usage of, uh, of materials. So we are, for example, building products that don't uh, use glues, we use plastic clips. The plastics themselves uh, are recycled. Uh, the packaging that that product comes in is generated from agricultural waste, be it, be it wheat, um, uh, stubble, um, or indeed uh, mushroom packaging that we use for our, our servers. Um, we're also looking at how do we um, recycle those products at the end, so we create a whole host of hubs uh, that enable uh, our customers to, to sort of recycle electronic waste when, it, when it's finished its useful life. And obviously part of what we do is make that useful life as long as possible, make it serviceable uh, and really look at during that useful life it uses uh, the minimum amount of energy. So a whole host of ways, but it's very much looking at an ecosystem end to end and figuring out how, how are the interrelated parts um, going to have an impact on, on uh, our world that we live in. Well, I think um, it's not just about corporate and social responsibility, it's about leadership and it's around an ethos that really drives our whole, whole company. Um, and so we're interested in the circular economy because you know, at various different points in our, our, our kind of 31 year history, we've been the most ethical company and the, most, uh, the world's greenest company. Um, so it ties into, into that sort of legacy and DNA. Uh, we come from a supply chain background 31 years ago creating uh, um, PCs in, in Michael's dorm room uh, in Austin, Texas. Um, and, but today it's about how do we create economic value um, for our, our customers uh, as well as for our, our shareholders, which is predominantly Michael as a private company, um, but really around delivering value to those customers and shareholders um, that in a sustainable way. So the manufacturing industry is hugely important to us. Um, we, we supply them everything from uh, PCs and servers that are economically more efficient than their predecessors. Uh, and that relates to power consumption, uh, their ability to operate at higher temperatures so you don't need power and cooling, um, as well as uh, enabling uh, our manufacturing customers to go on the journey that is the Internet of Things. So that's sourcing data within their ecosystem that enables them to be able to consolidate that data, turn it information into information that enables better decision making, more efficient uh, uh, manufacturing processes that enables them to create value for their customers and their shareholders. Well, as you say, the Internet of Things is a, is a kind of a, a new frontier. Um, from our perspective, we look at it in a, in a number of different ways. One is really around, you've got to start somewhere, so start where you are today. The, the next is really around, well, actually creating big data, as it's often termed, is only the first step and, and ultimately only creates a storage problem for you if you don't convert that into information. So one of the things that we're doing is obviously helping the customers uh, aggregate it, and that's aggregating near to the sensors, so they don't have to broadcast all that data from every sensor. It goes to a, a local gateway, which will consolidate that data and take out what's relevant and only broadcast back to the data center what is important. And then within the data center, we're helping them with uh, um, deep analytics that enables to turn, turn the data into information. I think beyond that, one of the key areas that people are, are, are looking at, which is the, every sensor actually creates a vulnerability in your, in your ecosystem. Uh, and so we're providing security solutions that really uh, enable uh, our customers to, to stay safe um, from potential intruders. Mm -hmm.